Well, guess who stopped in town? He was uh, over at Adams and uh, decided to stop by here. And I guess I'm not sure. Wait, let's see. Oh boy. All right, Bob, so you can't be serious here. You're not, uh, you're not dropping me off a of Yappa, are you? I got something better for you. You got something better, huh? Well, I it's don't hidden. know. You don't even know where it is right now because it's hidden under here. What can it be? Well, I guess we'll have to wait and see, but you know what, guys? He's not dropping this off here. This is uh, just leaving Adam's place. And if you stay tuned on Adam's channel there, you'll see what he got in place of... Uh, this is the 365 plus 365 basic yep. 365 basic so he's picking this up and uh it's going back to your place back for wisconsin. sale yes sir so back to wisconsin and that'll be for sale and i think adam's actually going to put a signature on that and it'll be yeah, a signed do that item later today yep. yeah so but anyhow we got something in the bed of bob's truck here that uh i think you guys might be really really interested in and uh i actually the first time i saw it thought Man, that thing's kind of cool for an old guy like me. So we're going to go ahead and unload this. And uh, we've got Bob here. we got Ken over here. And they're going to hang out uh, here for the evening and show them a little bit of Pennsylvania hospitality tonight after we get this put together. And there's some accessories that are in this box and some other things that go along with it. So I'm kind of excited about doing this. So yeah. let's go ahead and get this thing unloaded. Sounds good. All right, Bob. So what in the world do we got here? I know uh, Metsa Machine deals with a bunch of different products. Yep. And I know that uh, I've talked to you about some other things, but you decided to bring something here to my channel so we could showcase something that you have, because yeah. I actually found a little bit of an interest in this thing. I thought it was kind of neat. So tell us what we got. Would you believe that in the bed of this truck underneath the tunnel cover is a multi-purpose vehicle? Not really. Yeah. So we have inside of here, the Vylon multi-purpose vehicle. And we brought it down initially in the wheeler configuration for you. And it is all inside of the bed of the truck right now. So I'm going to flip open the tunnel cover. I'm going to climb up in there and I'm going to start handing you the components. And we're going to put together a Vylon multi-purpose vehicle. All right. Well, I see a Honda GX uh, 200 motor in there. I see some wheels and a frame. Handlebars, seat. All right, so we'll unload this. We'll take it over in the workshop where I got some tools. We'll put this thing together, and uh, I guess I'm actually looking forward to riding this thing around the yard and seeing how it really works. Yeah. But uh, once we get this together, I'll explain a little more about this wheeler, uh, why it interested me, and uh, how it came to be that Bob decided to bring this down here so we could showcase this on the channel and uh, kind of show you the assembly on this and how simple it is and what I could use it for around here on the property. Sounds good. We're going to go ahead and unload this thing in here into the workshop where we can put this thing together. And uh, I'm going to turn on my little portable air conditioning unit so these guys aren't uh, sweating. I know they've been outside all day today over at Adams loading and unloading uh, the Yappa processors, which are uh, actually very interesting. And if you guys aren't familiar with those, go check out uh, metsamachines.com and look at the Yappa processors that Bob also sells there. All right, so we just got the Vylon. 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 It's, it's a tricky name to pronounce, yep. the Vylon Wheeler. And I'm going to. Yep, it's Finnish name. It's Maine Finland. So um, it's the Vylon Wheeler. And uh, one important thing to note this is a crew cab half ton truck with a five foot, seven foot box. So um, this is not like the six foot, four box, not the eight foot box. So to be able to fit it in here, close this, you're kind of incognito. Nobody knew that we had another vehicle in here. Right, so that's cool. that's a nice thing. Now, I've got everything laid out here on the floor. We've got the four tires, the frame, the motor assembly, we've got the seat, the battery, and another cover plate. But uh, Bob says that when they ship these out, we send them out fully assembled. Yeah. Fully so assembled. So you'll be able to break apart the crate and just drive it right off. All right. And then you can put it in a component form like this if you want to take it to, you know, on a long trip where you don't want it um, sitting on a trailer or. Right. Right. More obvious but, what um, you're doing. So. I guess when you put this thing together, mm -hmm. two people could physically lift this into the bed of a pickup yeah, truck. Yeah, absolutely. We could have left it completely assembled and then just had the tunnel cover open. All but right. Since we were driving from Wisconsin down to Ohio and Pennsylvania and we just. We just figured it'd be nicer to, to have it all inside under the tunnel cover. All right. So what we wanted to do is uh, show you how this thing comes apart and how easy it goes together. So we're going to go ahead and do the assembly of putting this thing together here in the, 
the workshop today and uh, probably throw some fuel in it and go out and cruise around the yard in the driveway here. And uh, there's actually some other accessories that yeah. go along with this thing that uh, I'm actually most excited about because this isn't a one one time uh, standalone type of unit here. This thing does a couple multiple different functions and that's what makes it really very unique. And I grew up riding four wheelers. I grew up riding snowmobiles. I grew up riding motorcycles, everything like that. But the problem was, is they always stayed parked more than you could ever ride one because of the seasons. Yeah. Whether it be snow season, couldn't ride the four wheeler, snow was too deep, or whether it be snowmobile season and and uh, the weather was too warm or didn't have enough snow or whatever. So I might have given away a little bit of the story here. Yeah. But uh, we've got some accessories to go along with this that I think are going to be extremely cool and fun. And uh, I'll give you my take on why I prefer something like this. All right. So I got Ken here who is also with Metsa Machine. And Ken, you do a lot of the assembly on this stuff. You do... I mean, you're the guy behind the scenes that uh, most people don't ever get to talk to. You are also the fellow that is usually at every show yeah. with Bob. Yeah. And you're in the background. And I know when we were over at Ohio Woodburners Open House, you were the guy that was putting this stuff together, taking it apart, loading it up, doing whatever needed to be done. And you sure did make Bob look good, you know. <laughs> so all he had to do was come over and run the processors. But you're here today also, I guess, for... A little bit of help and knowledge but tell me a little bit more you were saying that this thing will actually break down a little further and let me zoom out here for you okay um, all right so explain to us how much more this thing would break down if somebody needed it to if you needed it to break down even smaller yet um this t-handle would unscrew out of here like this and this piece here is actually separate from this the rest of the frame. Here, so the, the whole the front, the whole front end steering column comes apart from the back section of the frame, is what you're saying. Correct. Just from that simple T nut there. Yep. Huh. That's pretty impressive. We're not going to tear this apart because why would I? It's just added work for later. But uh, we'll go ahead and put that T nut back in there. Let's get the wheels on this. I I can't wait to get this thing up and running. Like I said, it's got the. Uh, a Honda motor on it, so I know that that's going to last a good long time. Shouldn't have any problems, but uh, this pretty unique packaging, as I, I call it packaging, but it's just the assembly of how this thing is all put together. And give you a quick little show around here. Chains and everything else. And it just bolts right onto the back of that frame. I, does it bolt or does it clip and slide? Or There's, there's some, for the Wheeler package, there's some bolts and some uh, thumb screws. And then you've got the big uh, cables here, so... Your 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 uh, battery cable connection here, positive and ground, and then this one does the throttle and the ignition switch and all that stuff. But it's one plug, so. Huh, pretty neat. All right, well, I'm gonna quit talking. We're gonna start putting this thing together. Ken knows how to put these together, so I'm gonna follow Ken's lead on this, but uh, I guess take some mental notes of how this went together. So when we put the other accessories on this, and I'm hoping that uh, once we drive it around, maybe we can put some of the other accessories on it, or at least show you what they are and, and how much fun they'll be. So let's go ahead and throw this thing together. All right, so Ken went ahead and raised up the handlebars and it was another T-nut here that takes it from the drop position. He rotated it up, there's two pivot points here, and put the T-nut back in so the handlebars are up, turn them sideways so it locks that steering against the, the knuckle back here on the nut. We'll go ahead and just slide this in. And now we put a cotter pin on the end of it. Is there a washer or just the no, pin? just the pin. All right. It's that simple to get one wheel on. So let's go ahead and get the other one on. So again, he turns it so it locks that down onto the steering stop that's back in here. Don't know if you can see it very well, but the steering stop hits that nut, keeps that pin from pushing through. Go ahead and slide that on. Put this bent cotter pin in there. Rotate it out, and it's in. Now we got the whole front end of this thing put together, and uh, you're saying, Ken, it's just as simple as sliding the rear end into the receiver on this portion yeah. of it. So, all right. Pick this up. Make sure that these are flipped. Stack around like that. Okay, we're both of these. Yeah. So this is like a, a cam over type of system here so it's going to once we get it through the pins 
it's going to slide over and it's going to capture the pin down here and then he says we put this locking screw in and it holds this cam over in position so ken says lift one side up put the wheel on Let's see if i can find the where's that Go ahead and put the four lug nuts on. Always get them started. Don't use your impact to put them, uh, to start them. Because you can cross thread that real quick and easy and run it. So now that I've got them all started. It's going to be kind of a two-person ordeal. Lift that up. Um, I put a piece of blocking under there just so the motor wouldn't rotate down and smash or bang off the floor. But uh, just something simple to kind of keep it from getting away from you when you're putting this together. It's about four or five ugga duggas on that. <laughs> So the reason we did this is kind of saying that we have to be able to rotate this up and under. And he said when he took this apart, the wheels were on it, and this is kind of how he did it. So we wanted to get it up off the ground so we can rotate this thing in. But what I, first thing I want to do is make sure that we're squared up with the machine so we're not fighting with getting these custom pins here hooked in. So this cam lever here goes over that and then it rotates in and catches on the smaller diameter there and it's on both sides so you got to make sure that you have your rear end lined up with the front end so it all goes together nice and easy for you. So I look like I'm pretty close. Yeah, I'm a little here. Right? And then that threads all the way thumb, through. The thumb screws the threads through. Yeah. Just all the way to bottom on that? The thumb screw? Yeah. Got this one last, yep. I guess, capture bolt, if you will. So that will go right through there. All right. And those are 19 on both sides. And it is a nylock nut. What that did is this top bracket pulls everything together. It uh, holds on those two pivot point pins down there and then this is the last, I guess, safety from ever keeping it from coming Keeps apart on you. This, yeah. All right. And and for you guys that are wondering, this is non-suspended. There's no suspension other than the air tires. So uh, you're not going to go ripping it 60 miles an hour through the woods on something like this. This is for pulling a utility trailer, going and getting the mail, going and burning the garbage, doing whatever said that we have to bring the, the controller. Now this is not the throttle, this is the reverse, reverse forward select. and forward. Okay. So feed that up through there. And there's get some out of the back there. Right around in there somewhere, and I can go ahead and hold that. Mm -hmm. How did you learn how to do this the very first time? Instruction book or what? No. No? Um, trial and error. Yeah. But again, like I said, uh, if you guys were to buy one of these, they come fully assembled, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. And then there's also different versions of this you can purchase. We will talk about that later, and I'm not saying it right now because I want you guys to stick around and watch the whole video, but uh, this really turns into something interesting later. But the reasoning for all this uh, ability to take it apart is part of the transformations that this thing does. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go ahead and get these tightened down. So we've got the selector, the drive, neutral, and reverse selector bolted on. And he's showing me some of these other plugs that go with this. And this looks pretty simple. It's, a, I don't know, about a 12-pin connector or something, 11. I'm not sure what it is. But uh, why don't you go ahead and show them where that plug's in back there? Okay, so this up to that same hole, 
in the chassis. This flips open, give it a twist, and then that comes down and locks it. So it's it's similar to putting in a, a trailer, basically. Yeah, a trailer plug. Yeah, really similar. All right, so now we got one one left here. What this is, is that? This is actually for your hydraulic brake. Okay, so, so that's that. your rear brake. This has just, just one, rear brakes? One brake in okay. the rear, yep. And there's a hydraulic reservoir up here. And that feeds up through the same hole. So the way they did this, there's no bleeding of brakes or anything required. Nope, it's all all pre bled There's bleeders on it, but yeah. you, you don't um, you know introduce any air to it when you just. But it's got it. a little piston there that obviously locks into something, and that's that's how you are able to unhook the brakes from this. Yeah. Thing. So this slides down through that hole there. And that slides into there, locks in just like that. that. Locks in. So it's it's kind of almost like a little bit of a shoulder pin off the bottom of that cylinder, or that piston. You can locks see what in. Happened the, yep. My squeeze brake. Yeah. So it's it's basically pulling a cam lever up. It's activating this particular. Uh, I guess I would call that the hydraulic uh, plunger, if you will. Yep. And this is just a mechanical action that's pulling that lever up. And you can see the brake caliper here, hydraulic line going around to the. Uh, would you call? You wouldn't call that a master cylinder, would you? It's just the the hydraulic well, plunger like a, portion like a, of yeah, it. Yeah, piston or plunger. Yeah. So, off of that, back your hydraulic line to your brake caliper. All right, so we got still a little bit more left. We've got the roll bar, the seat, and one last electrical component to put in, and that's the battery. And it comes with this. Uh, there's a special name for that plug. I don't know what it is called, but uh, pretty simple setup. Basically, just put your battery in the tray, plug it in back there, and that battery tray is under the seat. Comes with a rubber strap. Lock it down, and let's see if I can get in here. Plug it into the back. Now that's pretty doggone simple. And again, I'm going to stress, keep in mind, you don't have to do this when you get one of these. This guy gets to put it together. But uh, I'm just showing you the process of doing this. If you ever wanted to tear this thing down, or if you did tear it down, put it in the back of a vehicle or whatever you wanted to do. But I think, honestly, this thing will fit in the bed of a pickup truck without any trouble. And you should be able to lower these bars down. So you could come pretty darn close to putting that in the back of a pickup truck and nobody would ever know what's in there. They might see maybe about that much of it sticking out of the top of the bed rail. Battery's in a tray and now it should be live. Turn the power on. There's even a little horn and there's a LED headlights. Pretty cool setup. The horn's my favorite. Got a chain guard here that goes on. Just a simple bracket and strap. It's gonna lock in up here, and then it's got this rubber compression strap, if you will. There you go. That's to keep your fingers out of the chain. One of the most important things, we're gonna put the roll bar on this, or I they call it a roll bar, but it looks more like it's an engine guard or they something. They call it an upper engine guard. Upper engine guard? Okay. All right. So I'm going to assume that uh, when you're out riding wheelies on this thing, that uh, upper engine guard keeps keeps the whole thing from flipping back over on you like a, a lawnmower or a tractor would. There you go. So we got that one, and I'll give you a nut and a bolt. And I highly recommend putting the bolt through... So you don't stab yourself with the end of the bolt on one side. So don't over tighten that because you will collapse that too. Just take it down to where it's locked on there and it's snug. And again, those are nylock so they shouldn't come loose whether it's tight, tighter or too tight. We got that, now let's go ahead and throw the seat on there. We have 
pivot point up here, slides into this. I'm guessing that that, this is the seat latch back that's here. That's the latch, yep. All right. That slides through. Ready? Make and there's, sure there's, the kind of yeah. there. and there's some tension on that. If you guys see how he's pushing down on that, there's tension on that. What that does is it helps that latch stay in position so it doesn't pop back up. But quick, simple removal if you needed to get to the battery or tear it apart. And again, get that in there. Push it down and it's good. Let's get some fuel in this thing and get it, get it running and see how it goes. All right, so we got the seat on. The electronics are all hooked up. And uh, he's going to go ahead and start this here in a minute. But I wanted to show you guys something. This thing comes with a two-inch ball hitch. And there's another attachment that uh, Bob brought with him for this particular unit. And it's something that they actually really say works well together. So we are going to go ahead and get this done. And I'll show you later what we're going to be hooking on to that. But uh, go ahead and fire this thing up. Power. Um, there's an electronic throttle control, so it'll do a sweep. All Would right. you like to give it a quick... So you say that's done from almost like a little servo mm -hmm. off of that electronic controller. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead and fire it up. Got a nice quiet little muffler on it. This thing's going to be way too fun. All right, let's get her outside and uh, throw a little helmet on here and give her a test drive. impressed that's uh that's a pretty enjoyable ride yes i put a helmet on for just fun play riding would i wear a helmet if i've got a trailer or i'm doing work around the yard probably not but it's the best idea to always wear your helmet uh, the reality of it is if you're using it for utility and work might just set the helmet aside but keep it somewhere where it's handy otherwise this thing's pretty neat i can't wait to uh show you guys the rest of what comes with this thing. All right, so on top of the Vylon wheeler that Bob brought us, we've got some other neat things that are gonna go with this. And I uh, won't be able to do a video on this until it gets a little bit colder, but I'm assured that this thing will run around in the grass as well. But this is a snow track. It's almost like a snowmobile track. And let me come around here, show you. But this snow track, also mounts to that. You remove the back axle portion of that and uh, the motor and the motor remounts onto this and this becomes a snow machine. And here's the front skis for it. So one of the really cool things about this is, is like I said earlier, I used to own snowmobiles. I used to have motorcycles, four wheelers, ATVs, all that kind of stuff. But this particular unit here, it can convert rather easily to a snow machine. Put the front two skis on, put the track portion on back there, and now I can run around and I can uh, play in the snow with it and whatever. So the, the, the thing that really allured me to this is because I've owned four wheelers and in the wintertime you can't ride them, the snow's too deep. And in the summertime I've had snowmobiles and you can't ride them. So it's literally you get three, four good chances to ride snowmobiles in our area here with the way our climate is. So this being convertible to a snow machine and back to a four-wheeler really, really interested me. And I'm getting older, 
So I'm really not looking to go 100 miles an hour through the trails and uh, worry about that aspect of life. So this is going to be kind of fun just to tool around the property with. Uh, one other thing that he brought with him is the Ultratech Light single axle trailer that I'll be putting together in another video. We'll do an assembly video on that. But why he brought that is he says that this thing with that back ball hitch pulls that trailer really really nicely and what that's going to be great for is running around the property picking up sticks picking up wood uh, i can literally go down and get the mail i can run over to the house pick up burnable garbage drive that up behind my shed there for the burn pit and uh, it's just a really good combination so i'm going to go ahead and end this video with this particular portion of the Vyland wheeler and we will pick back up at some point in time with assembling this track and the skis for that and we'll go ahead and get another video out with this dump trailer on here towing this thing around and moving some materials with it so i can't thank bob enough from uh, metza machines check them out metzamachines.com also they've got a youtube channel uh, i believe it is metza machines as well and see the other uh, pieces of equipment that they have give it a like give it a subscribe check them out and if you will Give me a thumbs up on this and we'll do a little bit more with these in some future videos. Show you how they work and we'll have some more discussions on them. Let me know what you think of this. Thanks and we'll see you again soon.